From Stan Lee's legacy to an exclusive debut character profile from Marvel's Avengers, we are celebrating 80 years of Marvel history. Hey, I'm a confetti cannon. Poof, I'm Lorraine. I'm coming out of your cake. I'm Langston. <laughs> this is an Earth's Mightiest Show special celebrating Marvel's 80th anniversary. A lot has happened here at Marvel over 80 years. So let's dive right in. Hey, here is 80 years of Marvel in 80 seconds. Enjoy. 80 years ago, Marvel started surprisingly small when publisher Martin Goodman emboldened Timely Comics to print the very first issue of Marvel Comics No. 1. More comics followed, celebrating war heroes, women with jobs, westerns, and yes, superheroes. Two decades and many issues later, the company took on the name of the one and only Marvel Comics. During the 1960s, superheroes boomed, welcoming the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, the Avengers, and the X-Men, as well as countless other heroes and villains. As time progressed, so did Marvel characters from Miss Marvel to Black Panther and Monica Rambeau. Marvel has always portrayed the world outside our windows and with it the world's diverse peoples. And as we saw more of people on Earth, we also began to see the universe expand to include new walks of life and of the cosmos. As the Marvel Universe grew, so too did Marvel fandom, and with it, superheroes began to appear on screens large, small, and everything in between. In fact, superheroes are practically everywhere you can imagine. Marvel has grown from a single comic book to a worldwide phenomenon. But how? Quite simply, because of you. You who shared our passion. After all, Marvel fans of yesterday have become the people who comprise Marvel today, and fans of today will become Marvel's future. Marvel's 80th anniversary is a celebration of your spirit of your heroism and yes, your universe. That was a packed 80 seconds because so much has happened in our history, but it does mean a lot to me because we were just Marvel fans before we started working here and that continues today. <laughs> it's true, yeah. And the fans of today get to be the creators of tomorrow inspired by the stories of the past. So time is... It's a big fun. wheel. It's fun. <laughs> it's a big old wheel. Um, but when we're looking at the past, you really can't help but look forward to Marvel's future. And this next piece includes one of Marvel history's most storied characters. Yes, who just happens to be coming in the future to the new game, Marvel's Avengers. So without any further ado, here is the exclusive debut of the Captain America character profile from the upcoming game, Marvel's <laughs> Avengers. Oh, yes. I cannot wait for this game, Lorena. Looks like it's going to be epic. Oh, well, if you're excited, then you should definitely stay tuned to the official Marvel's Avengers channels for more character profiles in the coming weeks. You're and, welcome. Yes, listen, and you can check out Captain America in Marvel's Avengers coming May 15th, 2020 to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Google Stadia, and PC. Oh, and speaking of Marvel's storied history, uh, Captain America was actually created in 1941 by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, and it's actually Jack Kirby's 102nd birthday this week. Yes, all right, so to celebrate the king of comics, we are taking a look back at the legend's legacy here at Marvel Comics with resident historian and executive editor, Tom Brevoort. I think Jack Kirby is the pinnacle. He's the most important creative force that comics have ever seen and are likely to ever see again. Jack Kirby is one of the foundational creators of the Marvel Universe, starting back in the very, very early 1960s. Jack, along with Stan Lee and Steve Ditko and a number of other folks, created pretty much all of the characters and all of the stuff that we think of today as the Marvel Universe. Thor, Iron Man, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, dozens and dozens of characters and concepts that came out of Kirby's uh, drawing table in his basement and Stan working in the editorial offices. Kirby's art stylings, uh, you know, approach to art changed comics not once but a couple of different times. In the 1940s, doing Captain America in particular, the way he would depict action, the way he would break up a page using odd shaped, almost like puzzle piece panels that kind of fit together. Everybody in the field started aping Kirby's approach to this stuff. 
A Kirby crackle is a term that was given to a particular way that Jack would, in a stylized fashion, depict this sort of cosmic energy. It's made up of, essentially, all these overlapping dots that give it this crackle. And what Kirby's actually illustrating there is not the dots, it's the negative space. The negative space that he's not drawing in is really what the crackle is. And it was a little bit of the language of comics that he just invented kind of on the fly. It became kind of a signature of his work. As he grew as an artist and became more sophisticated and did different things, he had an impact on the rest of the field. In the late 1960s, uh, the size of the original art uh, that comics were drawn on was reduced for production issues. Jack suddenly could approach the entire page as a unit because you could see the entire page at once and that meant that suddenly he would design across the entire page rather than a, a portion. Kirby also uh, was fascinated by using other media in comics. He was always interested in kind of pushing the boundaries of what you could do with comics, and one of those was collage. They're amazing to see, these bananas uh, vistas that he creates. They were kind of interesting and fascinating, and it was a way that Kirby was kind of using other media to expand on the language of comics. I imagine that if he had access to the kind of graphics that we have today, a Photoshop or whatnot, he would have been all over that. Uh, and he'd be doing things with it that you wouldn't even believe were possible. Kirby was a storyteller. He came from a storyteller's tradition, a storyteller's background, and the stories he made and the visuals that accompanied them have just permeated out into the landscape of the culture. It's sort of impossible to quantify Kirby's impact on the world of pop culture, partly because it's not finished yet. The work he created is continually finding new audiences and new expression in the world of comics and in all of the ancillary worlds uh, that grow out of that. Everything that he touched had some idea in it that still works and that still speaks to people today. I love getting to talk to Tom. He knows so much, it's bananas. <laughs> and honestly, it's impressive because Jack Kirby's legacy is life-changing to the Marvel Universe. It would not be the same place. Comics wouldn't be the same without Jack Kirby. Yes, happy birthday, Jack. And thank yeah. you to Tom Brevoort, who is a walking Marvel database. Frightening in some ways. <laughs> Um, and while we are celebrating this week, we also cannot ignore a great loss of an iconic creator this year. Yes, the merriest member of the Marvel Marching Society, Stan Lee. To celebrate Stan Lee's great legacy, I had an idea to get together some of us Marvel staff here at the Marvel New York offices and have them read one of Stan's classic soap boxes. For anyone who doesn't know, Stan's soap boxes were special letters to Marvel readers in the backs of your favorite classic comics where Mr. Stan Lee imparted his opinions and worldly wisdom as only he could. And so, here is Stan's soapbox, read by the people of Marvel. This is Stan's soapbox from November of 1968. Let's lay it right on the line. Bigotry and racism are among the deadliest social ills plaguing the world today. But unlike a team of costume supervillains, they can't be halted with a punch in the snoot or a zap from a ray gun. The only way to destroy them is to expose them, to reveal them for the insidious evils they really are. The bigot is an unreasoning hater. One who hates blindly, fanatically, indiscriminately. If his hangup is black men, he hates all black men. If a redhead once offended him, he hates all redheads. If some foreigner beat him to a job, he's down on all foreigners. He hates people he's never seen, people he's never known. With equal intensity. With equal venom. Now, we're not trying to say it's unreasonable for one human being to bug another. But although anyone has the right to dislike another individual, it's totally irrational, patently insane, to condemn an entire race, to despise an entire nation, to vilify an entire religion. Sooner or later, we must learn to judge each other on our own merits. Sooner or later, if man is ever to be worthy of his destiny, we must fill our hearts with tolerance. For then, and only then, will we be truly worthy of the concept that man was created in the image of God. A God who calls us all his children. Pax et justitia. Stan. 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 It was such a pleasure to record that with the Marvel crew. It felt really special, Lorraine, so thank you for that. I like it when we feel like we're part of something. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> um, go back and read more of Stan's soapboxes being printed in various Marvel comics currently running right now. They are so good. They're so moving, too. Oh, yeah, so good. Oh, and a special shout out to 
all of the creators who have brought to life so many characters and storylines from Steve Ditko and Joe Simon in our early days, all the way up to the creators of today. Oh, many of whom you can check out in Marvel Comics 1000 and Marvel Comics 1001. Yes, both of the new comics feature 80 pages with 80 epic creative teams. Look out for Marvel Comics 1000 available now and Marvel Comics 1001 out on September 25th. They're so good. Um, mm -hmm. There's still so much more to celebrate for Marvel's 80th anniversary as well, so go over to marvel.com slash marvel80 for all kinds of stories, retrospectives, cool deep dives, and even more of Marvel's mighty history. Yes, check it all out. Tell us what piece of Marvel history has meant the most to you in your life and hashtag at Earth's Mightiest Show. Yeah, we'll see you next time. I'm Lorraine. And I'm Langston. And this is Marvel. Your universe. Thanks for watching our Mighty Show. If you like this, like this, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the Marvel Channel. Or click the box over there to watch our last episode. What's been your best moment in 80 years? Ooh, whoa, well that would be, whoa, wait a minute. Have I been alive that long? You look great. Thank you.